determines the order of rank. To employ once more an old religious formula with a new and deeper meaning. It is some fundamental certainty which a noble soul has about itself, something which is not to be sought, is not to be found, and perhaps also is not to be lost. The noble soul has reverence for itself. There are men who are unavoidably intellectual. Let them turn and twist themselves as they will, and hold their hands before their treacherous eyes, as though the hand were not a betrayer. It always comes out at last that they have something which they hide, namely, intellect, one of the subtlest means of deceiving, at least as long as possible, and of successfully representing oneself to be stupider than one really is, which in everyday life is often as desirable as an umbrella, is called enthusiasm, including what belongs to it. For instance, virtue, for as Galliani said, who was obliged to know it, virtu e enthusiasm. In the writings of a recluse, one always hears something of the echo of the wilderness, something of the murmuring tones and timid vigilance of solitude. In his strongest words, even in his cry itself, there sounds a new and more dangerous kind of silence, of concealment. He who has sat day and night, from year's end to year's end, alone with his soul in familiar discord and discourse. He who has become a cave bear, or a treasure seeker, or a treasure guardian and dragon in his cave. It may be a labyrinth, but can also be a gold mine. His ideas themselves eventually acquire a twilight color of their own, and an odor, as much of the depth as of the mold, something uncommunicative and repulsive which blows chilly upon every passerby. The recluse does not believe that a philosopher, supposing that a philosopher has always in the first place been a recluse, ever expressed his actual and ultimate opinions in books. Are not books written precisely to hide what is in us? Indeed, he will doubt whether a philosopher can have ultimate and actual opinions at all, whether behind every cave in him there is not, and must necessarily be, a still deeper cave, an ampler, stranger, richer world beyond the surface, an abyss behind every bottom, beneath every foundation. Every philosophy is a foreground philosophy. This is a recluse's verdict. There is something arbitrary in the fact that the philosopher came